Hello, hello, everybody. Happy Friday. It is that time again where we go live for our Heat Press for Profit podcast. Now, today is going to be a little different as there is no guest. And you know what? That's completely fine because we're really kind of letting all of our listeners and those that tune in live be our guest. And what I mean by that is today is going to be a question and answers. But we are also going to go um, through this journey of heat transfers, understanding the press, uh, why knowing textiles is extremely important, and really understanding the adhesives of heat transfers and how they can react and move with garments or any accessories that you might be decorating. So for those of you that are new, welcome to the Heat Press for Profit podcast. Thank you for taking time out of your day to listen and join our conversations. If you're watching with us live on Facebook, YouTube, or LinkedIn, make sure you shout out who you are, where you're watching from, and I would love to know your business name. Business name. Now, this podcast is designed to have conversations with apparel decorators just like you and industry experts that can have an impact on your business. I'm excited to say that this question and answers day is finally here and it is something that I have been wanting to do. So because there can be a delay, go ahead and start popping in any questions that you have with heat transfers, textiles, uh, heat presses in the comments. That way I can see those as we go through this journey and really understanding um, heat transfers because this world is massive. It's in a very, very easy process, but there are so many little nuances to really um, getting a great quality product and application. So you guys, I'm Kelly Walters. I'm one of the educational uh, team members here at Stalls, and um, I really, really enjoy educating, teaching, providing solutions for apparel decorators out there that are heat printing in their business. Now, my background does have to do with textiles and really understanding um, how a heat transfer can react um, and how heat can react to textiles. Okay, that's one thing that's super important to me is understanding the materials that we're using as well as understanding the garments. Now, um, Let's just get started. I can see some questions starting to pop in. Hello, you guys. Janet, uh, I believe it's Yad, Swag, Heather, Darren. Hey, what's up, Eric? Uh, Joey C, love to see you guys uh, tuning in live with us. So let's, let's get right to it. Now, the first thing that uh, I really want to go over is choosing the right materials, selecting the appropriate fabrics and materials for your projects. And the reason why this is super important, and um, for those of you that don't know, I try to go live on our Instagram channel, Stalls Heat Printing, um, before we do our podcast. And the reason being is I like to interact with people as much as possible. We see questions there. We see comments. And one of the questions was, cotton, what's the best product for cotton? Um, as well as, what's the easiest textile to decorate on? And if you didn't guess it, it's cotton. Now, I understand with polyester and rayon and viscose you're going to you're going to get certain feels and the way those those materials lay on the body is going to be different than cotton but cotton you can pretty much put anything on um, as well as a high temperature i say anything lightly because sublimation does not work with cotton. So for those of you that are really trying to consider going into different heat transfer methods, maybe you are brand new to this industry and you're just trying to figure out how to get started. What do I need? How do I print my transfers? Which I feel like is something I hear all the time. What do I need to print? Well, we're not always printing transfers. It just depends on the material, the type of transfer that you're using. So Let's go back to that question. What's text, which textile? And the answer is cotton. You can uh, put a 
375 degree transfer on there. You can put a 260 transfer on there. So you've got some variation. Um, there's not a lot of stretch. There is some give, but not snap and rebound in cotton. So you don't really have to worry about how a transfer is going to expand on the body and then shrink back down once it has condensed. Very, very easy. There are so many products out there from, from hoodies, t-shirts, sweatpants, even cotton totes, right? Like all of that is really something easy to find. And it's almost impossible to screw up cotton. Anything I feel like can pretty much be screwed up, but just know it's an easy thing to start practicing on if you're new in the industry. So next is how material composition affects the heat press, tr heat process, tr or heat transfer process. Um, so let's do a 180. Cotton isn't really affected by heat, but polyester, viscose, rayon, all of that is affected. So if you are looking at decorating polyester shirts, um, even a blend, a poly cotton blend, maybe a tri-blend because those are so uh, popular out there in the industry, whether it has the, the third material of cotton poly viscose, cotton poly rayon, cotton poly spandex, um, those two of poly and that third is typically going to make that garment even more sensitive. And what that means is you have the ability to really smash those fibers, to burn those fibers, which causes a sheen or a box or kind of a melted look on that garment. And it's extremely important to understand the burn, scorch, or melting point of those fibers. So if you're taking a tri-blend from Bella Canvas and you are wanting to apply a transfer that applies at, let's just say, 320 degrees, there is a chance you're going to get a scorch. Most of the time, scorches do not come out. Uh, there's a difference between having a press box and a scorch. And so when you know the melting point or the scorch point of those materials, that really helps you uh, divvy up which transfers you can use for what uh, materials. So a CAD Cut Premium Plus applies at 280 to 300. CAD Cut Ultra Weed, which these are all vinyl transfers, guys, that applies at 260. So if you know your item is going to scorch around 280 degrees, you've got to find a material that is going to be um, more cohesive with that sensitive uh, texture or fiber. So go for that ultra weed with a 260 degrees. Now there are accessories out there. There are tips and tricks and the heat press for profit community, uh, which is a group on Facebook is excellent at uh, really coming together and helping people provide solutions and find solutions to get over the hurdle of scorching, which is very, very apparent in our world, especially as softer fibers and new textiles are kind of released or implemented into our wholesale decoration world. Now I'm going to scan some questions just to see if there's any um, currently that we have. Now, so going back to the cotton comment that we had on Instagram was, what's the best transfer for cotton? Well, the really the only thing you can't do on cotton is sublimation. Um, so the next thing you need to do is make sure the adhesive on that transfer is friendly with cotton. And what I mean by that is not all transfers are created equal. Not all adhesives are created equal. So you need to make sure that that transfer, that vinyl, uh, the screen printed transfer, direct to film, whatever you are using works in conjunction with cotton. So if you are looking at trying new material, you're new to this industry, please make sure you're checking the adhesive and making sure that the um, adhesive works with that textile. That's extremely important. Um, when people say, I can't get my transfer to apply, what's the textile? What's the transfer adhesive? Next is what's your application and the press that you're using? Because those all work with each other and each one can cause the transfer to fail. 
Um, great question. So Maria asked, how do you know if you have a scorch mark or heat box? Well, I can tell you, you will hold up that shirt and in the light or some type of um, glare on that garment, you will see a horrific box around the size of your heat press. So if you are using a 16 by 20 platen, you will see a shift in color, a shift in sheen from the outside of that garment that was not under the heat press uh, to where this part of the, the garment or accessory was under the heat press. And whenever you pivot that garment or shift it around the light, you will see a, a change in the sheen. Now, maybe you're using a smaller platen, a six by six, four by four, eight by 10. Make sure you are looking in that smaller portion. If you don't see the box, you don't have a scorch mark. So congratulations and keep moving on uh, through your order. But I do recommend testing, turn the shirt inside out, test it. That way you haven't ruined the outside. At any point, you are second guessing um, that something could potentially scorch. Test it, test the back, turn it inside out, test the, you know, inside of a sleeve. There are many, many opportunities on a garment for you to hide the testing factor and save that garment. Um, nobody's going to pay attention to a scorch that's on the inside. So um, when you know your textiles, you know what the fiber is of that garment. Look at your artwork. Because if you've got something that has a ton of detail, you're probably going to have to go to a screen printed transfer or a digitally printed transfer. Uh, that way you can get as many details as possible. When you're cutting vinyl, there are certain cavity sizes that you do not want to weed out. There are certain stems that you do not want to have to fight when it comes to weeding. And at any point, guys, if there is any terminology that you are unfamiliar with, go to Google go to the heat press for profit uh, group, go to the stalls YouTube channel. And I guarantee you um, there will be a ton of material and education on understanding the words that we're using or that I am using today. So when you are having to go to a screen printed transfer, there's a, there's a transfer from transfer express called goof proof, and it is a plastisol transfer. You can get incredible detail for a screen printed transfer. It feels incredible on just about anything, but it has a high temp application. So if you're looking at uh, decorating on spandex or viscose or spandex and rayon and, you know, some type of tri-blend, be cautious because the high temp of 365 is more than likely going to scorch you can still get a very beautiful, beautiful um, quality product, but understand what that transfer is going to do to the textile. You could have a beautifully decorated garment, but then see uh, the quality of the melted fibers. And sometimes that can devalue, you know, the true quality that you're able to produce. It's not taking away from the quality that you can produce as a decorator. It's just understanding those fibers. Proper sizing is important. Same thing for placement. Um, there's a bunch of tools out there that can really help you guide. Do you want to go three, four fingers down from the neckline of a crew? Um, and you know what? Outside of stalls, there is there are several other companies that have uh, utilities or accessories, uh, ebooks. We have a ton of ebooks that. Uh, can really help you understand where to put those placements. And you know what? I am not afraid to admit this, but put that shirt on, put the transfer wherever you want it, tape it on your chest um, or your hip, your sleeve, your shoulder, and then carefully take that item off and look and measure from there. Sometimes it's great to be able to see yourself, um, you know, in the mirror to see where you want to place something versus just trying to gamble and see where it's going to be before you heat apply it. Uh, most heat applications can be permanent. So I am a big, big um, advocate for 
test, verify, double check everything before you drop that heating element down. Because once you do, whatever's done has been done most of the time. Um, okay, gr another great question. What type of iron on for polypropylene bags? Now, um, and the follow up to this is and temp and application. So you know what? Polypropylene is going to be very tricky because it has a very, very low melting point. Not all polypropylene is created equal, just like polyester, rayon, spandex, viscose, all of it. Um, and different uh, manufacturers can use different types of processes and fibers. So order in a couple of those polypropylene bags and test them. I would start around 220 degrees, test it down for about five seconds, see what it does. If that 220 is melting, we got to go lower. But I would say there's a high probability of being able to decorate on that bag is going to be very slim. Um, if it doesn't melt, go on to the next temperature, increase it by 10. This is going to take a little bit of production time to get all of this testing down, but all it's going to do is set you up for high efficiency and production in the back end. Um, sometimes we have to prep and prepare just like you're cooking, prep everything before. That way, as you are going through the process, it is much more efficient and you're not looking at that job going, oh my gosh, that took me hours to complete when it maybe it could have only taken you 30 minutes. So Janet, I don't have an exact answer for that. Um, I just have a starting point on what you can do and I'll really kind of go from there just because there will be a lot of testing involved. You could start with CAD Cut Ultraweed. That's a 260 application because it's a bag, because we're not washing it. Um, I say this lightly, do your own testing. Um, Stalls does not back going away from application, recommended application, time, temperature, and pressure, because that has been tested. It's gone through washability standards. So what we put out there on our website or any of our websites, that's gone through a particular uh, testing phase. I am saying if you need to go to a lower temperature, then you're going to have to do your own testing. And that way you feel um, capable and confident when you are going through that uh, production process and also conveying to your customers that, you know what, I can do this. I can get it done. Uh, troubleshooting tips and tricks, guys, like it's kind of a little bit about what we've been talking about is you're going to have to do your own um, troubleshooting, connect with somebody or a group of people, a press for profit group. Guys, I'm telling you, the community is incredible in there. Um, and if you are part of the Heat Press for Profit group and you are tuning in live, um, pop it down in the comments, whether on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn, or excuse me, not Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, or LinkedIn. That way others can see, you know what, that person's in there and I want to connect with them or I feel comfortable asking questions. Um, Troubleshooting, I actually love. It's it's something that I like to see a challenge um, or a pain point and really dive deep into finding a solution for it. I think the more uh, experiences you can have on going through that troubleshooting process, the more of an expert that you can be. You can produce thousands and thousands and thousands of garments a week, but when you don't really have pain points, when you don't go through those experiences where you have to continue learning, what you know is only what you know. So if you have those hiccups, take them in strides and breathe through the process because I guarantee you, you are going to come out of that knowing more than what you started. Um, so I think that is something that we all should take in grace and in strides and just, you know what, it's okay. We have to go through it. Um, I say a little goes a long way. So do something, try it. If it doesn't work, lightly. And the best thing you can do is keep track 
of all of those um, adjustments that you've made, get that paper out and write it down. Because guys, I don't know how many times I've tried the same thing over and over again, because I did not write it down. I did not keep record of it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> can you tell, can I tell you where I got my hoodie from? Yes. You're not going to like the answer, but I got it from Athleta. <laughs> Um, but if you're wanting something similar, um, I absolutely love this, um, pin tuck all the way down. Um, and it is extremely soft. There is, it is a poly spandex cotton blend. Um, so it's got a lot of stretch and it's comfortable, but if you're wanting something similar to this, I would definitely check out, uh, lane seven. Um, and there's another one off the top of my head that is escaping me. Um, but it is a newer brand, not newer. We've been working with them for a couple of years now, but I will try to remember Carly. If you can remember, can you please put it in the group? It's one of our wholesale vendors that we've been working with, uh, more and more, but lane seven is on, is on my head right now, but that's another great one to check out. Um, <laughs> okay. Now that I've answered that question, because I have seen <laughs> the question several times on where I got my hoodie. So we're going to move on and we are going to really talk about advanced applications because in the world of heat transfers, um, dimensional products have really come in with an impact in our industry. That means patches, that means emblems, that means raised transfers. So that could be foam, that could be puff, um, that could be anything with a texture um, or extended fiber on that transfer. It's not going to be flat, soft, and smooth. There's going to be some type of added touch feel element to it. When you are getting into these transfers, do not be intimidated, um, especially with dimensional vinyl. You guys, they apply just like you would apply any other type of vinyl. It's with a heat press. And all you need to know and understand is the application instructions. So a uh, CAD cut soft foam, I believe, is 290, 12 to 15 seconds, um, maybe 300 degrees but it's a light pressure. So all I'm doing is adjusting my pressure. Uh, say if then if I was using a product like CAD Cut Ultra Weed, which is a very, very, very thin t-shirt material, that soft foam is going to give me that raised lightweight feel. If you are wanting to mimic the look of puff, then you know what? You want a longer quality net sorry, wrong word, not quality. You want a longer washability um, count than puff, go to soft foam. Washability factor with puff is lower than foam. There is not a difference in quality. It's just what it can withstand in washing. You can still produce a very beautiful quality looking product with either, but it's just understanding which one is going to have a little bit longer washability. Um, and that's okay. Not everything lasts forever. And I think giving that expectation to our customers, um, let's, let's retrain those minds of the buyers. I don't buy a product, um, ever in with the expectation that it is going to last forever, especially if it's something that I'm wearing over and over again. So I think it's really training and providing that uh, service to your customers and, and guidance and understanding that. Now, I know everybody doesn't think the way that I do, but after somebody that has been in the world of uh, fashion, retail, merchandising, dealing with um, clothes, right? Since I was 16, that is, that is something that is very apparent and it's just the way we've got to be trained. So for 20 years, I have dealt with textiles. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about in advanced applications is getting into emblems. There is, um, more and more of a need for an upper and lower heat of your heat press. Most presses out there come with an upper heat only. Some have the ability to incorporate that lower heat or add it onto your press. 
And if you are starting in this business, starting in this industry, and you are trying to think, how can I be different than Susan down the street? How can I be different than um, Apparel 101, you know, 20 miles from you? Look at transfers, understand your demographic, understand what type of decorated apparel you are wanting to put out into the market. You can you can go after several different markets, but I think at the end of the day, you have to think about what kind of decorator you want to be and the products you want to put out there versus just thinking, I'm going to decorate for anybody. You can always add that into your business. You can take on whatever job but stay true to you and understanding the products that you can put out there. So with that being said, patch and em patches and emblems, um, for those of you that are familiar with Stahl's products, that's flex style, that's uh, 3D embroidery, that is uh, sublimated patches, that's PVC, right? If you want to do something like that, get that lower heat. OK, that is imperative to your business to be able to provide those quality products. And yes, it might be an upfront cost, but I guarantee you, you will be able to recoup the cost of that equipment and increase your profit by adding that equipment. And I say guarantee because you're going to have to do the work. You're going to go have you're going to have to go out and get the orders and if you can merchandise your products correctly and understand who you're going after and those customers, they will want that higher perceived product. So um, the the new the new wave, the the new things that keep getting developed. Yes, there's always going to be new heat transfer vinyl. There's always going to be new technologies, but building out dimensional emblems and patches and kind of stepping away from embroidery, um, not really worrying about what can take puncture. Um, it's really can it take the heat. That's why heat printing with patches and emblems, upper and lower heat is, is so, so important. Um, guys, we've only got just a little bit of time left. So if you do have any other questions, pop down in there. Now, Christy said, I want to make game day wear for parents, fans, and local schools. And I will tell you, this is an incredible market. And if you think this one is highly saturated, I guarantee you it is not. Um, I have a ton of friends in the education side of the world, whether they are teachers, coaches, uh, principals, superintendents, and sometimes they don't even know where to go or what to do to have a store created or who, who to go to. There's so much opportunity in that world. So what's great for game day wear? Screen printed transfers, goof proof all day long. You can stock those transfers. You can print on demand. Uh, there's lower quantities. You can take orders and ship them out as needed. Direct to film. So our Ultra Color Max, which you can get from both Transfer Express and Stalls, is a full color transfer with one piece minimum. One piece minimum. Okay. One piece minimum, guys. Now, you still have to pay for the shipping on that one piece, so keep in mind that factor. But this gives you the ability to create samples, show those schools what you can do, uh, get outside of two-color prints, get into um, ombre, full-color, realistic images. You can do that with direct-to-film. And then my next added would be patches and emblems because that's going to take those left chests, those bags, those jackets, that headwear, um, really going to take those garments to the next level and warrant a higher pros, uh, pros, price and really um, complement what we're seeing in uh, the retail side of the world right now. Now, Carly did put our new uh, trend guide for uh, game day. So we, we talk about corporate apparel, we talk about game day, we talk about fundraising, and new, we talk about uh, dorm life, so collegiate. So check out that link. Um, it'll give you a bunch of different ideas. We have worked with SNS and Sanmar um, on 
garments in that. So you can check out the garments we've used as well as the decoration methods. So you guys, um, I hope you have enjoyed today's session for this podcast. If you have, definitely let us know in the comments. Um, and then, of course, you guys know you can always reach out to us with questions. You can read out, reach out to us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Send us a DM. Reach out to the customer service team. They are absolutely incredible. And everyone here with Stall, Stalls Transfer Express, um, even across uh, the global side of um, stalls, we're all going to take care of you. So um, as always, happy decorating. I hope you have a wonderful Friday and I look forward to our podcast every Friday because of you guys. So see you next time. Bye.